What's up guys, this is Sher talking, welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I'll be making a full review for the Saga So Fire Lord banner. It brings Fire Lord as an AoE damage dealer in the buffer, Eleanor a the buffer, but also defense buffer in Tyler, a multi-purpose specialist for X Remembrance. Let's start talking about Fire Lord, give the name to the banner. It's a MRT user with two different elements. He actually uses spells, has a specific weapon, and as you can see, status are insane. Not as insane as Misty, but very good as well. 100% Endurance and 100% Will are okay, but then we have 140% Intelligence, very high alongside 118% Agility, so very high Intelligence to always land in buffs, and very high Speed to attack before the enemy attacks. I don't know why it has Dex or T, it's because this character can actually inherit S-word skills, but they are totally bad. And STR is used because of the real MR skills that he also has. Now starts the fight with 30 BP because of the skill number 3. And will cast, dual cast, Kilo Nova to itself that lasts for 3 turns. This guarantees a chase with Kilo Nova Plus. And what is Kilo Nova Plus? An AoE B power attack that can buff all surviving allies intelligence by 30%. That's great if you're running a full mage squad. And you can actually get more Kilo Nova Plus as Chase, but they will always be based on RNG. On the start of a turn, you have a 50% chance to get dual cast Kilo Nova for 3 turns again, much like the latest version of Orluge. So if you have perfect RNG and get dual cast Kilo Nova on turn 1, 2, and 3, theoretically, for one moment in time, you will have 4 Kilo Nova Plus as a Chase. That's not real life, and I would say that you have between 1 or 2 Kilo Novas on average. And the start of a turn, uh, you also gonna cast Hellfire Scars 10 times for all enemies. That lasts for just one turn. And when those enemies are attacked by heat damage, that's very specific, you're gonna apply a defense down, that decreases defense by 10%, lasts for two turns, and stack, and will also debuff the enemy as charting intelligence by 5%. Theoretically, if you can attack the enemies 10 times with fire attacks, that depends on the your characters having multiple chase attacks, right? You can debuff 50% just from this passive alone. It will also grant an attack down to all enemies. This is not that big, actually it has low value. It decreases the damage by the source for 10% only in that turn. And then uh, defense down, that is the same, 10% value for that turn only. When landing an attack, Fire Lord always chases with Meteor Quasar. This is a very good skill. It's his skill number 3 for 13 BP as a command. And Blunt and Heat. It is a spell, so it's going to use Intelligence. And when the attack hits, there's a chance for the buff. STR, Intelligence, and Will by 30% on command max level and 25% as a chase. This is already good enough to debuff because most enemies use STR and Intelligence, right? The problem being, it lacks dexterity, that will cover some other types of skills. And 13 BP may seem a little too high, we need to discuss this a little further. Okay, but you get the guaranteed chase, that will be above 25% for these volumes. And then, we have 30% damage increase at all times. When attacking with heat attacks, recovers 2 BP. What does that mean? It means that you're going to get at least 7 BP per turn. You were guaranteed the Kilo Nova for 3 turns, that means that you always chase with your uh, Kilo Nova and then meet your Quasar as well. So your command will be Heat, that means 5, and then Kilo Nova extra, 7, and then even 9, guaranteed for 3 turns. But after that, you have only 7 more if you get the extra Kilo Novas from the 50% chance. So you do have some good BP generation, if you have a character that gives you at least 3 more, you're gonna be stable, but if he gives 5, it's a guarantee that you'll usually be able to use Meteor Quasar every single turn to keep the buff in the highest volume. Also, when attacked by an attack that will cause resist, damage is reduced by 30, and then again by 40. You also have another 30% damage increase from Intrinsic and a 37% chance to evade resisted attacks. So, two defensive layers. Exactly, you should account for attack down as well, but it's low volume and good enough damage, but relies a little bit on RNG. Skill number one is MR, so I don't know why this is the only MR to skill. It's AoE, blunt and heat, and has a low chance to apply stun. But remember that to apply stun, you rely on your intelligence. Fire Lord exists mostly to just B 
Defeat, Road Blocker, Remembrance Fight. Why? Because you can debuff Will for three turns if you want, but at turn two you already have to stop one of the Road Blockers. And you can actually use Meteor Quasar on turn one and then Fire Attack on turn two. If you're using the Reward Focus Formation, this is a guaranteed stun. And then you can already stun the second enemy on turn three because you have been debuffing Will for a lot. So it, it's an easy button. That will just help you beat that if you haven't yet. It is possible to beat with other characters like Chiel if you have her uh, via Team um, of the Night Wind. But that is also hard because we don't have enough status. Chiao is good because she has the highest status for all versions. And him of the Night Wind is a medium chance to stun. But her intelligence is not as high and medium for 120 should be inferior. She cannot debuff Will the same way that Fire Lord can. So he just helps you beat World Blocker, but also can be used as a normal debuffer for AoE. There are too many enemies and you want to debuff a starting intelligence, it does work. Wheel is here just to allow you to do more damage and increase your chance to apply ailments. It's also worth to say that if you can keep casting Meteor Quasar, you will debuff 30% from Command, 25% from Chase, and that means two hit attacks for use it. That allows you to reach 65% debuff at least, and the extra skill Nova Plus that you may or not cast. And if you have other hit attackers, they will be debuffing more and more. There's also Meteor Swarm Plus, this is an AoE spell as well, that can apply Paralyzes, it's very high chance to apply Paralyzes, and can also debuff Intelligence by 20%. As a debuff volley, not important, if you need Paralyze for Rio Queen, and if you are a new player, okay. But, uh, Fire Lord's all about Meteor Quasar and the chances to chase with Kilo Nova, because this Kilo Nova improves your Intelligence as well. Buff your intelligence, increase your chance to stun, and also improves the damage of other intelligence-based units. For Remembrance fights, Fire Lord will work well with people like Creator, because Creator also uses MRs, but it's a mage, somehow, although he does endurance type of damage, Goddess, for example, and so on. So Fire Lord is a good style, it's a okay debuffer. If you have uh, a full heat-based squad, you can debuff the enemy by so much that you're gonna receive zero damage. And Fire Lord is fast and will work most of the time, unless the enemy checks for the number of debuffs and uses the fire weakness. There are different types of boss fights and sometimes you have to change your debuffer based on boss behavior. Well, Fire Lord's not really needed for anything besides Road Blocker if you want an easy button. After that, people can still use him here and there, but he has a reliance on making fire squads that are not as good as cool and lightning ones for now, but if you have been collecting cards that give extra effects for fire squads, then he can give you much more. I believe he deserves a 4 out of 5. Moving on, the next one will be Eleanor, and she has 100% endurance and will, low will, and 95% agility. The low average for mages and 136% intelligence. That is a good volley. Nothing else here stands out. She improves damage for everyone by 30% and reduces damage taken for everyone by 30% too. This was added on global because she was really bad without it, and with that, she's still bad. Then on the start of a turn, she grants enhanced sorcery of 50% improve to spell damage to herself. That is 150% improval. She then has heat ups as well of 30%. In this case, it's five times. She also grants herself 150% damage in total, but uh, has max potential by turn five. Then, when landing an attack, she always chases with incineration plus. That is a triple S power heat attack that can instant kill. Forget about instant kill; doesn't really matter. And by the end of a turn, she recovers HP for everyone for around 400, and also five points of OG Gorge. That's exclusive for global, and five points. It's usually useless. When she attacks, she recovers HP by around 400, gets one extra VP, and then applies Defense Boost to self. That is just a 10% damage reduction for two turns, because she chases, she will actually reach 4. Every time she attacks, she also gets 5% Intelligence. Really, really, really bad stuff. Uh, first skill is Healing Fire, single target, hit attack, that is just so that you don't use a normal attack and recover her HP for another around 400. 
Second skill, Scorching Protection, is pretty nice. It applies a 20% defense up, that will decrease damage from the enemies by 20% for the whole fight. And also we apply a uh, end of turn recover of medium effect. Medium should heal for more than 2,000 easily for 5 turns, but then after 5 turns it's gone. She also casts a guard up very large to herself to decrease damage taken by 50%. Then when she attacks, uh, it's an 8 power 10 BP attack that before attacking grants her dual cast flame hammer plus 4 3 turns. Um, dual cast is strange in this game. When you are playing Final Fantasy, dual cast means that you will cast the same skill twice, but this one is different. You are going to use an 8 power attack and then chase with flame hammer plus, and you have the chase attack for 2 other turns. Because she actually uh, gets, well, see that she attacks, gets 1 BP, and then incineration will give her another. That's 5. When she uses floating flame dance, she will then have 6. And then if you keep using it, you can get as much as 8. And then, see, she needs 10. If she has a companion like Leon, that will give her 5 on start with Merciful Light and then keep giving extra BPs, she can eventually just keep using floating flame dance every single turn. But what is Flame Hammer Plus? It's a spell that is just a power, but it can debuff the enemy SGR and intelligence by 10%. Okay. You can get as much as 3 chases when uh, using Floating Flame Dance. You're gonna use this only on turn 2 on Wars because you wanna use skill number 2 first. And then, uh, there's damage, but just heat, and it's not that high. You just got Joe that can obliterate the enemies with fire damage if she wants, or cold, or shadow. Eleanor is pure fire and she can combo well with Will, with Emerald, with Fire Lord, any others, but they are still lacking something. When I try to make fire squads, they are not as good. I know I skip it some, but I don't feel like that is good enough. 30% debuff is not that high anymore, like Fire Lord can debuff up to 55 without any other problem. Actually, he reaches much more than that because his chase is also debuff. And we also have other characters that can debuff enemies to zero, like Real Queen, Misty, and even others. So uh, the extra damage is not really all important. What you can take from this character is that she can decrease damage taken by 30% for everyone, and then apply a 20% defense up. And she stays there trying to debuff. May not be the best debuffer, but works in some situations. For Remembrance, we already have way too many uh, staff users that are good enough. So, you could theoretically inherit Song of Souls if you wanted to give uh, 10 turns in of turn recover after she loses the 5 turns one. But if she loses 3 LP, it's costly, and I don't think this is enough healing. So, Inheritance doesn't really improve Eleanor too much. I don't think she's worth, and I will give only a 3 out of 5. Then we go to Tyler, and Tyler is a very peculiar character. Most people that like Remembrance want Tyler. He has 130% SGR, and 100% Endurance, and 100% Will. Those are just okay values. And the other setups don't really stand out. He does have Intelligence, but will not need it too much, unless you want to stun with him, and he can really help you on road blockers. Okay, so on the start of a fight, he's going to improve 50% damage for those that wield X. That is paid for Remembrance, because making a full axe squad without thinking about Remembrance is almost impossible. And then he also grants All Surviving Allies Ultimate Axe Mastery. Pretty similar to Rose and also to Brownie, we have a lot of effects for those that use axes. 3 axe for BP, HP recover for around 400, a 50% attack boost, and a defense boost that decreases damage taken by 30%. So, just from here alone, we already have a uh, lot of damage improval, 50% here and then another 50% there. Uh, there's more. He grants all surviving allies weapon enhance of 30% improvement for axe wielders up to 120 on turn 4 awards. And also an attack boost every single turn. How much do we have then? 100, then 220, and then 235 improvement. Actually, 245 because we have another 10% for Super Screw Guard. Because he decreases damage taken yet again by 30% when everyone is alive, and he still has another 32 himself. He doesn't take much damage. Will could be a problem in future fights for um, ailments, but I don't think this is going to happen anytime soon. He also gets 
45 points of OG Guard every end of turn, because when he attacks, he already chases with Quick Axe. That is a C power attack that recovers HP for everyone for on 400. And then, one on Northern Drive, he's going to chase with two other skills as well. Savage Slash and Spinning Axe. Savage Slash is a C power AoE attack that buffs STR by 20% because it's rank 1 for everyone. And then Spinning Axe is a single target attack A power. It has a chance to debuff the enemy will by 25% of rank 1, since it's a follow-up, and then a uh, medium chance to stun. <laughs> so what are you doing here, Tyler? You also want to be used versus the road blocker, because by debuffing will, you can use Tyler on mover drive, and after he debuffs will, he tries to stun. You can place him on the back row of a here guard focus formation, for example, and he will already provide enough. You don't need him to be in the front lines anyway. And since he's on overdrive, he can go and attack before the enemy attacks and try to stun Roadblocker with his gameplay. You know, be so easily done with the current characters. You probably need Hawk to buff a little of your status though, but it's doable. Besides, skill number one is Smash Strike Plus. That before attacking grants attack boost of 15% damage improval for two turns. It's just so that you don't use a normal attack and you have the extra blunt damage. Not really necessary because Tyler is used in Remembrance fights and the enemies are always weak to all types. The second one, Spinning Axe, is a 5pp attack. This is the same chase attack, so if you really want to stun on Overdrive, use Spinning Axe as your command. You'll be debuffing Will by 30% on max level, and then you're gonna chase with Savage Slash and then chase again Spinning Axe. So you try to stun twice. If it didn't work on the first time, it will probably work on the second time. Skill 3 is Double Axe Rush. This is a uh, 2 hit, D power, single target attack, slash and blunt, that heals the HP of everyone by around 400 per hit. So if you use this attack and you are also chasing with Quick Axe, in one turn, Tyler is easily healing for 1.2 thousand. And uh, there's also the other extra healing from passive. 1.6 thousand. You're gonna recover half of your HP just by use of this. The only problem with Tyler is his uh, own BP generation, that is just 3 plus 3, so it's just 6. It would be nice to use him with some other cards that give him BP so that he can keep using the Wax Rush, but I don't think it will be totally necessary. Just use whatever you have, and Tyler really helps with Road Blocker in all future Remembrance fights. He does have a freestyle, but there's nothing that you really want to get here. Well, let's say that if you don't want to use a normal attack, you can use Ki, but it's not really necessary. You know, their skills don't really help. So Tyler is a standalone character that will help you right now on Remembrance and in the future as well. His value is probably for, I don't know, the foreseeable future. They don't release many X styles and his utility is much like I said, like Rose. The Rose um, has some competition in the future, although she will still be useful. Similar setup. And Brownie. The biggest point here is that you can probably build a gun squad without Rose in the near future, and you can also leave without Fairy if you wait a little. But in the case of Tyler, he's so good that he will matter much more than those two. As a remembrance unit, a 5 is guaranteed. As a normal unit, I would say a 3.5 because it is almost impossible to make a full access squad. Overall, a uh, must if you like about Remembrance, but if you don't, just wait till we get him back in the future and do the stages that you can do with the characters that you have. With all that said, let's get back to the better image. Is this better worth summoning for? In my opinion, no. For the general players that don't care about beating Roadblocker right now or beating all Remembrance fights on day one, you can easily skip since this week we only have one banner and it's good to save since the Emerald Beyond banners are coming up. The bad thing is that Tyler is an X user and we won't be seeing many X users and he really makes an impact. But you cannot have it all unless you're going to spend and that's on you. I skip it because I want to save for the future and that is just my opinion. This banner will receive a Bronze Plus award and well, tell me here if you agree or not. Thanks so much for watching, please click the like button if you want to support the channel with donations, we use the links in the description. I hope to see you soon in the next video or live stream. Goodbye.